In May, I, along with a group from Orlando, Florida, traveled to the western portion of Ukraine to take humanitarian aid to and encourage our brothers and sisters there. Our congregation, along with many other congregations across the North American Division, had donated generously to help the Ukrainian Adventists after war broke out in February. Over $800,000 has been donated so far from the North American Division to help them cope with this enormous humanitarian crisis where over 16 million people have had to leave their homes. We were also interested to see what difference these donations had made. We were inspired. At the height of the conflict, the Seventh-day Adventist Church was baking over eight tons of bread a day and loading buses and vans with it and hundreds of gallons of fuel for people trapped in the conflict zone. Once the buses delivered the bread and fuel, they would load up the vehicles with refugees who had no other way to escape. They would take these people to safety in Western Ukraine, to a friend's or a family member's house, or they would house them in church institutions or church members' houses. Every church, school, youth camp, or retreat center where we visited was filled to the brim with refugees. They are continuing to shelter and feed thousands of orphans, elderly, disabled, or others who have no safe place to flee to. How active has the Seventh-day Adventist Church been during this war? The Ukrainian Union President Stanislav Nosov told us that when an independent survey was done on Google asking people to indicate what humanitarian organization had helped them while they were in the war zone, 71% of respondents stated that it was the Seventh-day Adventist Church. The Adventist work in the country has been massive during the war. The Ukrainian Church is extremely grateful for the help that the Worldwide Adventist Church has been able to give. However, we also heard of upcoming challenges that the church is going to face as the war continues to grind on with no end in sight and as the brutal fall and winter months approach. The first challenge is that the Adventist churches, schools, health centers, camps, and even church members' homes in Western Ukraine are still filled to overflowing with displaced families from Eastern Ukraine. The sad reality is that the crisis will only get worse as many of the six million refugees who fled to Europe at the beginning of the war returned to their homeland. The church is in great need for finances to build long-term temporary housing for these people. Millions of dollars are needed for these types of structures that can be built in different parts of Western Ukraine where refugees reside safely until they can return to their homes. The second challenge is that the Adventist Church and surrounding countries had sent in tons of fresh produce that aided in feeding the refugees housed in church buildings. The churches in the surrounding countries are not able to keep up that rate of assistance as their own resources were depleted. That is, the Ukrainian Church will need more finances now to purchase food to feed those refugees who are reliant on the church to survive. And the Ukrainian economy is in freefall. They need more help now to continue feeding the refugees who can't yet return home. The third challenge is now that the front lines are on the far eastern border of Ukraine, the evacuation trips are even more expensive as the church continues to send vehicles that are filled with humanitarian aid on the way in and then with refugees on the way out. Fuel is very expensive now and each trip can cost over a thousand dollars. Jesus has promised us that faith the size of a mustard seed can move mountains. We didn't realize that the funds that would come from our congregation and other congregations in our division would help make the Adventist Church the most active humanitarian organization on the front lines in this conflict. I invite you to join this humanitarian work of sheltering and feeding refugees as our brothers and sisters in Ukraine continue to be the hands and feet of Jesus.